This video is going to teach you how to make a repeating pattern for spoon flour from a drawing. To follow along with this tutorial, you will need paper, pencil, a permanent marker, a camera or scanner to put your drawing into the computer, and Adobe Photoshop or a similar software. Step 1. Doodle! Lightly sketch out a guideline picture in pencil, then trace over it with your Sharpie. Today I'm doodling a little donut and cupcake picture. As you can see from my drawing, I'm not super careful about what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of getting a feel for what kind of picture I want to draw. If there's any issues, I fix it in Photoshop later. Keep drawing whatever you like until you fill your piece of paper. The important thing to do is to keep all of your drawings away from the edge of the paper. There should be a white margin around your entire paper. Erase your pencil guidelines as best as you can. You can edit out some of it later, but it's easiest if you get it done in real life before putting it into the computer. Import your drawing into the computer either by scanning it or taking a photo. Step 2. Color! Open up your drawing into Photoshop. When you first import your picture, it most likely won't be a perfectly black and white image. We want to edit the drawing so that as much of the gray is gone as possible to make it nice and clean. We'll do that by making a curve layer. Click on the layer menu, then new adjustment layer, curves. The adjustment palette on the right hand side of your screen will have a little graph. Adjust it as I'm doing in the video here to make it uh, your whites as bright as they can be and your blacks as black as they can be. When you're happy with the balance, it's time to flatten the image. Go to the layer menu, then press flatten image. If desired, you can make some changes to your image before proceeding with coloring it. For example, on my drawing, I wasn't a fan of some of my sprinkles because the the outlines were touching too closely, so I'm just going to go ahead and select the ones I don't like, delete them, and copy and paste some sprinkles that I do like into their place. While I'm at it, I'm also going to adjust a few of my lines that are a little messy using the eraser tool. If there are any gaps, I use a paintbrush to fill those in with black. When your drawing is all cleaned up, make a duplicate of your background layer. I like to name it Outlines. Change the blending mode of the layer to Multiply. This will make all of the white areas of the image see-through and the black parts opaque. When I changed my blending mode to multiply, you'll notice in the top left hand corner of my image that I got a little bit of dirtiness showing. This means that when I did my curves earlier, that there was a little bit of gray still showing in my image. So all I'm going to do is just do another curve layer on this again to make sure that the white area is pure white. I'm flattening my image again here. I've duplicated my layer for my outlines and changed the blend mode to multiply. Now it's time to begin the actual coloring process. I like to make a new layer for each element that I'm coloring. So I'm going to make a layer for my cupcake, a layer for my donut, and a layer for my background. This allows me to erase an entire layer if in the future I really dislike how I've colored one thing without adjusting the other elements. You'll want to make sure that the new layers that you create are underneath your outline layer. Use the magic wand tool to select the areas that you want to color in with a flat color. If you want to color in more than one area at the same time, hold down the shift key while you select the areas. From the select menu, choose modify, expand. I like to do an expansion of about two pixels. What we're doing here is making it so that our selection box is expanded a little bit underneath our outlines to avoid having white gaps. Choose the paint bucket tool and make sure that your fill mode is set to foreground. 
you can choose the color from the tool palette at the left hand side. If you're coloring multiple selections at the same time, make sure that contiguous is not selected in the top menu. Repeat this process for each color that you want to do, making sure to change your layers whenever you desire. Step 3. Tile. Before proceeding with the tiling step, make sure that you save a layered copy of your document. This will let you change the colors later if you want to make a new colorway for your design or make any other changes. Flatten your design into one layer by using the layer menu and choosing flatten image. Create a duplicate of your layer. For now, we're going to hide this duplicate layer. Choose the little eyeball on the layer palette to hide it. Then click back onto your background layer. We're going to offset our picture so that all four edges are now going to have our drawing and we're going to be able to see where the gaps are. Do this by using the filter menu, then choosing other, then offset. By default, you should be automatically centering the image, so we're just going to go ahead and use these settings and press OK. You'll see right away that there's two obvious gaps in our pattern. We're going to want to fill these up with other elements. Re-enable your, your duplicate layer. What we're going to do is steal the elements from this and put them onto our background layer. Use the selection box tool or the lasso tool to cut out one of your elements. I'm just going to do a square and cut out all the overlapping areas later. Hide the layer again and paste your element onto a new layer. Move the new element wherever you'd like, then erase any unnecessary overlap that you may have. You can use the transform tool to rotate it, make it smaller, make it bigger, whatever you need to do. I don't really recommend making things bigger because you're going to lose quality on your image. Always better to go smaller if you're going to change the dimension anyway. Repeat as necessary until you fill up your canvas however you'd like. It can be hard to tell if your pattern is successful or not from this point of view. What we're going to want to do is make a new canvas that will allow us to see multiple repeats of our pattern. Make a copy of your entire canvas by selecting the entire area and copy merged. Create a new document, then paste it in the new document. From the image menu, choose image size and make it smaller, something like 500 pixels. Select your entire canvas, then from the edit menu, choose define pattern. Name the pattern whatever you'd like. Create another new document, something that is much larger than the new smaller image you made, maybe something like 2000 by 1000 pixels or so. Switch to the paint bucket tool and from the top menu change it from foreground to pattern. You'll be able to see your pattern in the little drop down box. Choose it. Fill the canvas with your beautiful new pattern. If you're happy with it, you're done. If you're not happy with it, time to go back to the drawing board and make some adjustments to your layered document.
Save a high quality copy of your image as a JPEG. You're ready to upload. Step four, upload. Now that your design is ready for the world, you can upload your design onto Spoonflower to make it into fabric, wallpaper, or gift wrap. Take note of the design size that's on the uploader. You can change this design size to make sure that the pattern appears in real life at the size that you'd like. You can also upload the same design uh, multiple times at different sizes. Just make sure to hit save this layout. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. If you want to reference written instructions, I've included a link to those in the video description. Thanks for watching and happy crafting!